G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Right, Thursday afternoon here in Australia and the market has bounced back bounced back ever so slightly, up, you know, just over half a percent. Uh, any kind of gain will take at the moment, but the uh, market is still very shaky and a lot of people are obviously scared at the moment. Bitcoin dominance just under 41%, well, a little bit more than just under, but under 41%. Uh, volume is down again obviously a lot of people scared at the moment uh, not a lot happening on the market uh, that's to do with the price at 46,000 people are obviously scared it'll go lower and I think it's definitely possible that it could excuse me and I mean have a look at those gas prices super super high at the moment absolutely ridiculous uh, and every kind of day that this goes on uh, for longer and I see Solana continue to pump uh, up another 20%, you know, I just keep kicking myself every time I see how high this has gone. But, you know, again, I've already spoke about this. Sometimes you just miss things and I've missed the Solana boat, plain and simple. And if it goes on to $2,000, then so be it. But I'm not jumping into something that has pumped so hard uh, and particularly while other things have dumped because I get the feeling like Solana will get to a point where it will have a very hefty correction and that's where I might look to get in but until I see something like that I just can't do it but yeah the Solana is doing so well because it has cheap gas fees there is almost zero gas fees on it very very cheap it's basically what Ethereum 2.0 is supposed to be in those regards it still has to has a long way to go before it can really become uh, a real Ethereum competitor but look, uh, price-wise, doing extremely well. Now we have to wait to see if it gets that true adoption by, uh, you know, all the projects that are out there at the moment. Because there's still, you know, nowhere comes close to Ethereum. They are winning that battle. But these gas prices, the gas wars as they call them, they really are hurting Ethereum. And 2.0 cannot come quick enough. All right, so let's have a look at the market again. Uh, a bit of a mixed bag, some things doing well, like Solana uh, and other things not doing so well uh, have been fairly brutalised definitely over the last few hours. So what's done the best then in the last 24 hours? I'm going to be uh, assuming that Solana is going to be right up there. Well, well, there we go. Algorand doing extremely well. IOST, uh, Near Protocol, Hedera Hashgraph, Solana Arweave, uh, eGold, uh, so Elrond, there we go. Look, Shiba Inu has even come out of nowhere. This is people buying the dips. The dips are coming in uh, and getting bought up. And again, that has a bit to do with the gas fees as well. Uh, ICX, Luna, Atom, Filecoin, you name it. Uh, a lot of coins doing fairly well. What about losses though? What's done the worst? So IOTA, Telcoin, Perp, Chainlink. Uh, very strange that that uh, has done not so well. Uni, uh, I think a lot of the uni price uh, sort of suppression at the moment is people worried about the SEC and things like that. Uh, Litecoin down, I've got some interesting Litecoin news. You know, I just spoke the other day about, you know, is Litecoin a dead and dying project? Well, it's, <laughs> it's as though they must have been listening to me because now there's news about it. Whether I think it'll really change things or not, we'll have to wait and see. But look, some pretty good gains there. Not really, you know, too many bad losses. And a lot of these coins that uh, have losses, uh, you know, had some other pumps not so long ago. So the market is what it is. Let's have a look. I mean, the Bitcoin chart is really where I get most of my information from because it still dictates the market whether people like it or not. We can see Bitcoin now hovering down a little bit lower around that forty sort of $6,000 level. I do think it's possible that we're going to come down uh, to retest this $42,000 level. Now, I'm not saying that's what is going to happen. I just get the feeling like that's probably uh, something that could happen. I shouldn't say I think it will. It's just hard to tell at the moment. We can see it's bouncing all over the place, but we do have a weekend coming up. So there could be one more push uh, down to try and get it below the 42,000 which is support sort of resistance and if it goes below 42,000 like regular closes I definitely would be a little bit worried still not panic selling you know I don't panic sell my Bitcoin if anything when the price is going down like it is now I'm going to buy that's what I do with Bitcoin I like to buy it on its way down uh, and then you know take profits once it's hitting new all-time highs if I'm really taking too much profit like I said I don't really take too many profits from Bitcoin. That's more what I do with altcoins. 
But Bitcoin just hanging in there 46,000. We'll wait and see. Again, not going to surprise me if we don't have a push down towards this $42,000 level. Not saying that's what's going to happen. Just wouldn't be surprised. Uh, in all fairness, I don't know exactly what it's going to do. No one does. We all just take some educated guesses. Uh, and my guess is we probably travel sort of sideways for a while. I don't think, at least until probably next week, again, maybe with another push down towards 42,000. But I get the feeling like it probably won't be till next week before we see any big moves. But hey, look, I didn't expect it to come down to 42,000. And literally within about 24 hours, it did what I said I didn't think it would do. So there we go. All right, moving on. Here is some very interesting information. A number of these stories I found very interesting. So I thought I'd brought them, bring them to your attention if you didn't know. Third largest Bitcoin whale wallet just bought $23 million worth of Bitcoin. They are buying the dip. This is the third largest Bitcoin wallet out there. Do you think that they maybe had money on the side, had been taking profits from places, didn't put in a short, and then start to dump some Bitcoin to then buy it back in even cheaper. I tell you, I wouldn't be surprised if that's uh, what happened, that this uh, address had something to do with that. Now, look, that is a bit of market manipulation, though. Uh, but not that kind of, you know, it depends on whether you call it really bad market manipulation, but it's because there were so many people longing it. That's what it was. They knew a short was the best way to go when there were so many people putting in longs. Uh, and they probably worked out that, you know, anyone using 5x or more leverage would be wiped out if they pushed it down to a certain price. Hey, presto, we put in a short, we start selling off Bitcoin, get it down to that price and snap it up nice and cheap with all the profits we already had. Plus, they probably uh, shorted, the, shorted it as well with a short short, you know, something like 2, 3x leverage, something like that. Maybe even bigger, who knows, but... That wouldn't surprise me. But this is the third largest Bitcoin wallet out there. They're buying Bitcoin. What does that tell you? It's not over yet. They are still going to shake everyone out, particularly all the people using leverage. It's a dangerous game. I hope that if you're in it, you know, you use stop losses and, you know, are good at it. Because if you're not like a lot of the retail traders, unfortunately, come in and they think this is the best way to make those really big gains and they just get absolutely crushed. Right, $100,000 worth of NFTs were lost due to an OpenSea bug. Oh, this would hurt. Now, with the price of gas fees, like all the NFT stuff that you see happening, it's by big whales and that. It's generally not too many small people getting in on this NFT action. Just can't afford it. The transaction fees on Ethereum are you know, insane. Even if you're getting into an NFT, which is pretty cheap itself, the gas fee to try and get it is absolutely horrendous. And then you can go look on the NFT space on Solana at the moment. While the gas fees the gas fees are cheap, a lot of the NFTs over there, I mean, they're thousands and thousands of dollars. There's not a whole lot of cheap NFTs going. I'm not saying that there's none, but a lot of them are just super expensive anyway. So the NFT game at the moment, it really is being played by the high end of town. Uh, and I am still yet to buy an NFT. I did get into the Sneaky Vampire uh, Syndicate uh, and I'm waiting to see what happens there. But look, if it ends up costing, you know, thousands of dollars to buy one, then I'll be out. I just won't uh, do it. I can't afford it. I'll wait for, you know, Layer 2 Solutions and uh, Ethereum 2.0 and all the rest of it to actually work before I start jumping into things that I'm just not overly sure of. But what happened here was there was the bug on the NFT marketplace, which caused traders to lose about $100,000 in NFTs to burn addresses. So the bug has been patched, but the damage is irreversible. So some of these NFTs that were lost, done and dusted, gone. They won't be seen again. And that's pretty sad for anyone uh, who bought those NFTs uh, and have lost them. But you know we can only hope that the people who lost uh, those NFTs you know, could kind of weather that kind of loss and hopefully no one who unfortunately maybe went in too heavy into an nft and really lost a whole lot that would be sad all right standard charter so that's a bank over in europe they value ethereum at twenty six thousand to thirty five thousand structurally now they value ethereum again at twenty six thousand to thirty five thousand while also predicting that bitcoin will reach a hundred and seventy thousand 
I tell you, if Ethereum goes to twenty six to thirty five thousand dollars, I will be absolutely cheering. And look, I'll be cheering if Bitcoin goes to one hundred and seventy thousand as well. Don't get me wrong; that will be absolutely amazing. I would love that. I'm not sure whether you know this will happen in this run or not. It's it's so hard to know. I think eventually, absolutely, as long as Ethereum 2.0 rolls out smoothly. I think 26,000 to 35,000 is actually well short of where I see Ethereum going in 10 years. I think 10 years time, excuse me, provided everything goes well, I'd say, oh, excuse me again. I think you see Ethereum well over $100,000 per Ethereum. That's, that's my bet in 10 years time. But that is, again, never financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. That is just me taking what I call an educated guess based on how well Bitcoin has done over its time, but also based on the fact that we're now getting to that exponential curve where things are really starting to happen. Adoption is really, really happening. We've got some other stories that will look at that. All right. Let me know down below if you think Ethereum can get to 26 k this cycle and if bitcoin can get to a hundred and seventy thousand dollars this cycle i don't think uh, either of them can do it this cycle i definitely think in the next cycle or two not a problem whatsoever and look again i hope i'm wrong if they can get to these kind of prices that will be absolutely amazing i'll be stoked i'm just yeah it's hard to see them getting there considering where we are at the moment but in saying that things move very very fast in the last part of a bull run Uh, And again, some people still think that this is a dead cat bounce uh, and we're going to find lower price targets again. And again, we do know that the big end of town here, big end of town is here and they are trying to manipulate the market to shake everyone out, shake your confidence and buy up your coins when you panic sell. Bitcoin's a perfect example, but you know, Ethereum's chart look like this and a lot of other charts look like this. Again, look at all these. These are really, really good projects and most of this is people panic selling. They think the market's going down, so we're getting out, and then other people are just snapping up these discounts. You need to remember that, and a lot of the time, it's the big end of town. Right, so the SEC will stop at nothing to control the entire crypto space, says former federal prosecutor. So the SEC has now threatened to sue the NASDAQ-listed crypto exchange Coinbase. So it's all over the lending protocols, and I put out a tweet about this that... I now understand, you know, why BlockFi uh, have reduced their rates so much. They're probably quite nervous at the moment uh, because they obviously suspect that they are going to have uh, the SEC come after them. I don't know how and why. Like, yeah, as long as they are, you know, they're not doing shady stuff in how they get the uh, return for their clients. If they're operating like basically any other sort of listed uh, banks and things like that, uh, and are completely transparent about you know how they're doing it. Yeah, I don't see why they shouldn't be able to provide yield, as they say, uh, on anything. You know, the SEC it is owned by the old, not owned, but anyway, it's it's old traditional finance people in there, and they simply cannot offer four percent, three percent. They can barely even offer half a percent to one percent interest on cash. But cryptos can do way better. And so this is the old traditional finance just trying to slow everything down. Old traditional finance is buying into all of this, getting on top of it. And they're doing it through the SEC and governments and, you know, senators holding up bills and all those kind of things. This is just the old trying to slow down the new so the old can catch up and get on board. And look, some of them will be smart enough and they'll be able to get on board. Unfortunately, some of them will just get left behind and they'll uh, they'll refuse to change. They'll be stubborn uh, in their old ways. And a lot of people get like that. And, and I know that from, you know, uh, my mum and my grandparents and things like that. The older they get, the more sed- steadfast they are in their ways. Now, not completely. It's not like they're, you know unable to change at all but a lot of to- a lot of the time they just are really stuck in their ways and they just it's it seems too hard for them to change it's not so much that they can't and won't but it's a whole lot of work and that's what we see happening here with traditional finance 
trying to slow this all down and doing everything they can to put the brakes on it because they're not ready for it and they don't understand it and some of them unfortunately just won't understand it and that is what's going on here at the moment right after pay so i accidentally said after pay had been acquired by paypal yesterday it was square cash up that acquired it uh paypal sorry Afterpay, yeah, was acquired by PayPal, uh, but it wasn't. It was Square Cash App that acquired it. But PayPal do have some kind of uh, buy now, pay later sort of system. I don't know exactly what it is. I used it the other day, but I can't remember uh, what the name of it is. But Afterpay, absolutely keen to explore crypto services after regulations are clarified. So crypto-friendly Liberal Senator uh, Andrew Bragg asked if Afterpay had plans to offer crypto services in the future and their answer was once we're able to understand regulatory framework this is the big hold up at the moment in this space we can absolutely see where our customers are going not might be going are going and this is put politely it would seem to us that they are going to want to participate in this way absolutely young people the younger generation are piling into this space you know, there's all this regulatory FUD that's going on. But it's mainly in America, really. In other places around the world, and we've got more stories that I'm going to show you about this, they're adopting this. They're getting on board. And this is here in Australia that uh, this is all happening. The Australian buy now, later, uh, Afterpay Giant uh, has been speaking to the Senate inquiry here in Australia about Australia as a technology and financial centre. And I really hope Australia get on boards gets on board with this and acts really, really quickly and becomes a leader in this space because this is where we want to be a leader in the new revolution you know, of finance. There's not a country that doesn't want to be on the front foot of that. But unfortunately, America, because their government is still owned by the US sort of dollar system, they are really trying to put the brakes on it at the moment. But I can tell you right now, they're not going to kill this space. They can't afford to. They will be left behind. They are just slowing it down for as absolutely long as they can until they get all their ducks in a row and then they're going to let it fly so while there's a whole lot of fud going on trying not to get too caught up in it this is all just a plan for everyone to again the big end of town that's really what it is the big end of town to get themselves set before they're ready for everyone else to then have their little piece they want to get in early they want to make sure that they have you know courtside seats as they would say that's the saying they want to have courtside seats the best seats in the house and you know have everything ready and they're going to buy up everything cheap and then they're going to sell it to you for an absolute mozza i mean if you're here already then you're already in early it won't be so much you that's getting it sold to for a mozza but unfortunately the rest of the world that's what's going to happen if they don't uh or i won't say don't but aren't fortunate enough to get in uh, early this is super interesting. Rox hires an ex-IMF economist to lead a Bitcoin-backed CBDC project. This sounds interesting. I love this. So, Andreas Jobs, whose career spans the IMF, World Bank, and Bermuda Monetary Authority, has been appointed as Rox's chief economist, chief currency economist, sorry. Now, Jobs will be tasked with helping to scale Rox's CBDC plus program and payment network, which allows countries to issue new primary or secondary fiat currencies backed by the computational power of Bitcoin. Is this what is coming? Are CBDCs going to be backed by Bitcoin? Are countries, nation states about to pile into Bitcoin? I said this a while ago. I truly believe that the American dollar can and most likely will stay the global currency, but it's going to be backed by something like Bitcoin. And if the American dollar doesn't do it, then it gets left behind. And if they try and stamp out all this, you know, new wave of, again, the financial revolution, you know, the cryptocurrencies that are taking over, then America will get left behind. They're not going to do that. And again, I'll, I'll say this, I don't want to harp on too much. All of the FUD and everything that's going on right now, it is all, again, just the old traditional finance trying to get themselves set. They missed, they missed the start of it, and usually they're one of the first there. But they, you know, they were criticizing cryptocurrencies for so long, and so now they can see the benefits of it, 
and if not the benefits, at least the profits that can be made. And so they're just trying to get themselves set. They don't want this to run away before they are ready. There's that old saying that, you know, the average investor like you and me, when we've missed the boat, we've missed the boat, like, you know, Solana, missed the boat. The big end of town, they can bring that boat back. We can't. <laughs> we just literally miss the boat. And that's what's happening. It's all being, you know, held back and suppressed, suppressed, suppressed till everyone gets their position again, the big end of town, and then get ready for when this thing takes off because it's going to be big. Right. So Mark Cuban, he's come out and urges Coinbase to go on the offensive against the SEC. Again, this is, <coughs> excuse me, to do with Coinbase you know, th being threatened to be sued. Uh, and Mark Cuban, you know, even he knows the last thing we want is for lawyers to try and sort all this out. You know, death by litigation, they'll turn it into nothing. We need smart heads to come together. We need crypto regulation as a new regulation, not trying to fit crypto into old regulation. Like, you know, if there's an organization that needs to be in charge of cryptocurrency, it shouldn't be the SEC. It shouldn't be the CFTC. It should be a completely new organization that is, you know, has people that understand cryptocurrencies in it. Uh, a completely new organization that understands what's needed, not an old organization that's hamstrung by old finance that aren't ready for it and don't believe in it and want to fight it and do all the rest of it. And unfortunately, that's where we are. You know, SEC are doing everything they can to try and be in com control of crypto, but there is no regulation. So how can they say that they're in control of it? It's a very messy situation at the moment. But as I said before, I don't think it's going to last forever. It could last another couple of months. It could last another year or two. Who knows? But once it's all done and dusted and everything settles, you know, cryptocurrencies are the future. Again, my personal opinion, not financial advice. And then here's another example of it and why America is not going to want to fall behind. Bitcoin hungry Ukraine moves to legalize cryptocurrencies. This is happening everywhere. El Salvador's done it. Panama is looking at it. Other states, uh, other, sorry, South American countries are looking at it. Tonga, I think, uh, was looking uh, at doing something the same. All these countries can see, because we're all backed by the US dollar, doesn't matter where you are, your country generally has a lot of US dollars. That system is failing. Cryptocurrencies are the answer. They will actually save the US dollar. I think the US know that. Hence why they're getting into all this Bitcoin mining and everything. And the SEC uh, is Bitcoin friendly. But the problem is that's because they can get on top of Bitcoin. They've had a chance to. What they haven't had a chance to do is get on top of all these other cryptocurrencies. And they are, you know, and it's all about these big ends of town again, feeling like they've missed the boat. So they can bring the boat back. Uh, for me, I'm just holding on for dear life. That's my plan is I'm buying up all the coins that I like. I'll sell a few here and there. But at the moment, I'm not doing any panic selling. It won't really matter how much lower the market goes, short of, again, you know, Bitcoin getting back to under 20,000 would be pretty scary and it would be pretty hard to hold after that. But I think there's so much more upside. I'm not panic selling. I like the projects that I'm in. I think once this all cracks off, you know, there's a lot of people saying it, you know, Twitter, Twitch, uh, YouTube, you name it, that this will most likely be the greatest transfer of wealth in history and definitely in our lifetime. But the thing is, these things do come along somewhat sort of regularly, like, you know, generally once every generation or two, there's something like this. And a lot of people believe this is going to be it, where it's going to be absolutely huge. And if you've put yourself in the right positions, now this won't happen overnight. It's not just gonna, you know, like, I don't know, November the 11th this year, all of a sudden, all the cryptocurrencies just go to millions of dollars, no. But over time, the next sort of five to 10 years, yeah, I shudder to think what the prices are. There's a saying out there that most people overestimate the kind of returns they're going to get in the short term. So they get in now and they think this is going to 10x and it doesn't. But they underestimate the kind of returns that they're going to get in the long term. Hence why I'm more here for the long term. I'm not too worried about the short term. Don't get me wrong, I'll take some profits here and there. I will have some cash sitting on the side. But I am more an investor and I'm thinking more long term. Last but not least, 
again, I spoke about Litecoin. Is it a dead project? You know, nothing kind of really seems to be happening. Uh, it's been getting its, you know, backside handed to it uh, against Ethereum and Bitcoin. And, you know, what is it, 24, 48 hours later after me saying that, all of a sudden I read this. Litecoin ventures into smart contracts, NFTs, through OmniLight. So OmniLight is an open source platform being dubbed as an Ethereum killer. Everything's an Ethereum killer. Solana, uh, Cardano, you name it, all of them, Polkadot. It will introduce smart contracts, DAOs, tokenized assets, and NFT functionality on the Litecoin network. So basically it's like a second layer to Litecoin that will be able to handle smart contracts and things like that. Similar as they're trying to build that out uh, in Bitcoin as well. But what's interesting is Litecoin is a test net for Bitcoin. A lot of the things that get implemented on Litecoin eventually get onto um, Bitcoin. Not all of them, but a lot of them do. So maybe, you know, I don't know if OmniLite will then become part of uh, Bitcoin or not. We'll have to wait and see. But very, very interesting that now Litecoin's uh, heading in this direction. And, and I'm glad they needed to. Something needed to happen or they were basically just going to die off. And I'm still not now aping into Litecoin. We'll have to wait and see because maybe this is kind of too little, too late. They just left it for too long. But it is interesting that now they're heading down this uh, kind of track because Litecoin, very, very cheap to send. They don't have the same kind of issues uh, with scaling and things that uh, Bitcoin has. Now, Bitcoin's Lightning Network has definitely helped, but Litecoin's got the Seg SegWit Network, which is also on the uh, Bitcoin network. Like I said, Litecoin is a bit of a test, met, test net. You can consider it somewhat similar to sort of Kasama for Polkadot, not exactly the same. But here we go. Is this what's going to save Litecoin? Because it really has not fared well since 2017. It has not had its moment where it's kind of fired back and tested new highs against Bitcoin or Ethereum, whereas a lot of other coins, they don't have the history though, you know, like Polkadot, uh, Cardano and all the rest of it. They don't have as much history as Litecoin. So they may be outperforming Bitcoin at the moment, but have they done that over long enough? Really not too many coins have. Uh, outside of Chainlink has done pretty well. Uh, it's basically gone up the whole time. Uh, it was going up in a bear market, so that's interesting. But, you know, has Chainlink now kind of hit its kind of peak and now is this where it just levels out? Uh, I'm not saying. We'll have to wait and see. But Litecoin has been getting destroyed. And, you know, more for sentimental stake, and that probably means it won't happen. But, you know, Litecoin is just one of those old coins that I've been invested in for a while. I hope they can do well. And again, I do think that whole PayPal thing might help uh, to save uh, Litecoin, also Bitcoin Cash. I think there's definitely upside that they have been uh, put into that uh, basket because that's going to go worldwide uh, very, very shortly. But also this smart contracts, NFTs and all the rest of it and their gas fees again are super cheap and it is very, very fast and as secure as Bitcoin almost. I don't know about 100% is secure but you know they're very similar code so yeah we'll have to wait and see what this means for Litecoin I am still worried but again being a kind of semi long term holder and believer in Litecoin I hope this is something that can really uh, change the space for Litecoin but now they're devs in that they really need to and I heard they were getting into Asia and that but that's what needs to happen. They need to get into some countries nice and early and get countries to adopt Litecoin, Litecoin, Litecoin blockchain. Not just the coin itself. The coin's good, but PayPal's already going to distribute that all over the world. This whole, uh, you know, smart contracts narrative and all the rest of it. They need a country. And I think I remember it was something like, I don't know if it was Korea or something like that. Uh, Charlie Lee, I believe, was... Uh, talking to people quite some time ago, this is a year or more ago now, uh, about them adopting Litecoin and all the rest of it. Uh, I, I think it was Korea, but I could be wrong. Anyway, a lot of interesting stories out there. I thought, love to know your thoughts on any of them down below. Do me a favor, go hit that like button. I really do appreciate that. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on the game train overall of sort of late, but you know we'll have to wait and see. Uh, whether, again, this is that dead cat bounce or just, you know, a shakeout, which I think it is. Till next time, 
I'm out.